Hey everyone, just wanted to do a quick review of the new Vortex Aero Cross Country Throttle that I recently purchased. Um, first of all, let me just start by saying that Adam at Vortex Aero was very helpful and responsive. He shipped the throttle to me very quickly and all of my interactions with him were very pleasant and I'm grateful that someone's out there trying to make fairly priced aftermarket parts for this sport. I think that's great. Um, I had originally purchased this throttle from them in lieu of, of getting the one from Polini just because I want to support their company, encourage them to keep doing what they're doing and making these aftermarket parts. And I do realize that our market is pretty small. It's difficult to scale to a sustainable size. And so just wanted to put my money in a place where it's going to count. So with that, let's jump right in. So as I already alluded to, this throttle from Vortex Aero is essentially a knockoff of the Polini throttle. Uh, they cost about the same, so I, you know, I paid 150 bucks for this, and then I've got a friend who got the electric start version of the Polini, also for 150 bucks. And because of the price point and the difference in quality, my opinion would be that if you're going to purchase this throttle from Vortex Aero, it should be primarily and only because you desire to use the additional fuel sensor and integrated engine meter that Vortex Aero offers for these throttles. Otherwise, my opinion is that you'd probably be better off buying the original Polini version. So the first thing I noticed when I got the throttle, and it's not a big deal, it speaks a little more to presentation and kind of first impressions more than anything, but the packaging itself was pretty roughed up when it arrived. Um, and for me, that kind of diminished the like brand new feeling. Um, and it's not a big deal and you know could be certainly an isolated incident with my particular package. Um, but just seeing the thing that looked like it had been around a while and, and been roughed up a bit, kind of give it that used feeling, so to speak. Um, and I got to hand it to them. At least it comes in like a jewel box style package rather than just a bag as the Polini would. But I guess I just would have liked to see a little more care taken in the packaging itself. That's all. My chief complaint about this throttle is that the inner cable is only flexible along one axis and not the other. So you can literally hold it out like a fishing pole in one direction because it's so stiff. But if you turn it 90 degrees, it's limp as a noodle. And for me, I felt like it was restricting the rotation of my hand movement. And it kind of was encouraging the loose cable to travel in an odd plane of movement. And it like forced it against my cage and netting as if its life purpose was to like get caught in my prop someday. So it actually bothered me so much that I had to tear into this brand new throttle, um, take it apart to figure out what was going on. So it turns out inside there is actually shrink wrap around the cable housing and electrical cable that runs the full length of the cable for some reason. Um, and as you imagine, that prohibits motion since the two cables can't move independently when they're shrink wrapped together. Um, so what I ended up doing is actually cut all of the shrink wrap off, and it's a lot of work. Um, but when you're done, everything is super flexible and pleasant. I'm not really sure why they felt the need to shrink wrap it together, but in my opinion, that is the biggest crux of this throttle. Um, and makes for some potentially dangerous situations because it's not allowing the throttle cable to remain limp, so to speak, and it forces it to travel in its own own plane rather than just following the movement of your hand. Um, and the fact that it fights you, it's, it's just not pleasant to fly with. It's always trying to twist the throttle out of your hand. And I know several people who have this throttle that, that never even noticed. And so I think it, you know, it definitely depends on the unit you're flying uh, and you know, what you're used to. Uh, but for me, this was a, an absolute deal breaker. If I wasn't able to fix it and identify the problem, um, I would have had to send this throttle back. Um, but again, kind of goes to speak to the Polini throttle, which does not have that and uh, comes with very flexible cabling. Um, and so it's a non-issue. So while I had everything apart, the second thing I noticed was that the cable boot at the end is dimensionally incorrect. And so it's not actually secured to the throttle housing in any way. Uh, mine's got what looks like a small section of shrink wrap tubing over the throttle connection itself and then an oversized boot that is slipped over the top uh, for what I assume to be aesthetics only. Um, the larger outer boot offers very minimal strain relief because it's not secured to the throttle itself. And that basically allows the cable to move around and flex a lot, <clears throat> which puts strain on the cables at the point where they're entering the throttle plastic housing itself. 
So kind of like a pro tip, if you're hacking into yours, trying to resolve some of these issues uh, like I did, uh, one thing you can consider, and what I did on mine, is I ended up pumping that outer boot full of hot glue before reassembling the boot back onto the throttle so that it's, it's more attached to the throttle itself and will actually offer the strain relief that it was intended to offer. And strain relief is really important on this particular throttle because of the way the wires are routed into the throttle housing itself. Um, the wires make direct contact with the cable housing and with the throttle housing, which creates a lot of friction and a lot of bending points, which really need to be uh, secured. And so what I did is I actually added a little bit more hot glue right where the wires enter the throttle to completely immobilize them. So tracing those wires into the throttle housing itself, uh, to me, I felt like the wire management inside the throttle housing is, a, is pretty poor. Uh, we've got soldered wires that are left exposed and just simply hot glued in place. Um, I would like to see maybe a little more shrink wrap tubing used inside. And while I realize it's just as functional with or without the shrink wrap, it just speaks to some of the quality in manufacturing um, and attention to detail. And so along that same vein of thought, um, inside the throttle you'll notice there's no lubrication of any kind on any of the moving parts. And perhaps you could argue that that's not necessary, but you know, a dab of light grease goes a long way to prolong the life of the throttle and prevent any unexpected hangups in its operation. And considering that stuck throttles is the number one cause of injury, um, I think that this could be one of the areas that certainly could be approved and at least a little more thought put into this area uh, would at least give me a little bit more peace of mind. So the next thing was when I was putting the throttle all back together, um, the two halves screw together and I found that the screws that hold those halves together uh, strip out really easily. So and I mean like before they even feel tight. And so it's hard to get the halves to meet together all the way around seamlessly without there being a slight gap somewhere. Um, and I'm not sure why that would be other than the fact that maybe this is just a softer plastic that was used. Um, but it's just something I noticed and something to be aware of. Um, if you're taking your throttle apart, don't over tighten those screws when you put them back because they will likely strip out on you. Um, the other thing to be aware of is there's no instructions of any kind provided with the throttle. And I typically wouldn't feel like instructions would be necessary for a throttle. Um, I'm a pretty mechanical guy, so I was able to work around figuring out what's what. Uh, but the throttle comes with some loosely packaged unidentified components and two nearly identical electrical plugs. One's got a two-wire pigtail connection and the other doesn't. Um, and it's reasonable to assume that the one with the pigtail is for the kill switch, and that is correct. Um, but I had to put an electrical meter on it to confirm which one was which just to make sure. And that's just something simple that a piece of paper could have easily identified and saved me the hassle of having to do. And now speaking about those unidentified objects that come with the throttle, um, they're for attaching the throttle to the carburetor. Now, I might just be missing something on this, but the only components that were supplied with mine for attaching it to the carb was a small brass ferrule, which looks like the head of a pop rivet, and a aluminum wire cap like you'd see on a bicycle derailleur. Neither of which really make a strong cable stop connection by itself, in my opinion. Um, so I can only assume most people either purchase a brass cable barrel with a set screw to be used as a mechanical cable stop, um, and then maybe they optionally dress the cable end with the provided cap to prevent it from fraying, or they just simply crimp that cap in place as the mechanical stop, uh, which I personally am not comfortable with because it's not designed to be loaded, um, nor do most people use the correct crimping methods to do that. Um, but the lack of instruction there again kind of leaves one to wonder or maybe even to resort to possibly chintzy solutions and maybe even dangerous solutions. So I actually chose to solder the brass ferrule that comes with the kit to the cable itself because the cable is made of galvanized wire and, and can be soldered and that just prevents it from slipping. Um, and then I crimped the aluminum cap in place directly behind and in contact with that ferrule as a backup and to prevent fraying. And it's worth mentioning that the Polini throttle is provided with a brass barrel stop that has a set screw style mechanical lock for the cable, which is very intuitive and secure. So the other thing about this throttle, um, I've got smaller hands, and even if you have monster hands, the Velcro strap that's used on this throttle is just way too large for the application. 
And I'm talking, Leo, when it's tightened around your hand, you've got 50% of the usable Velcro region that's that's unusable and lost because it's just flopping in the wind. And this is something that the Polini throttle uh, really does well and makes the Polini throttle stand out as a higher quality option. So anyway, there you have it. Um, overall, I'm happy with the throttle now that I've made several modifications to it. I'm not so happy that I had to make modifications. And in hindsight, if I were to do this all over again, I would I would certainly go with the Polini throttle. Um, having seen both of them side by side, uh, it's pretty obvious that the Polini throttle is a superior product um, for the same price. So like I said at the beginning, um, it's a good option, but just be aware of some of these things that you may want to address before you take it for a flight. But I hope this review was helpful for some of you. Um, but let me know your thoughts in the comments, and blue skies. Safe flying, everybody.